I had just given birth and was feeling a lot of pain all over my body. Yet my mother-in-law spat words at me that made me question my hearing. It's impossible for a mother who hasn't experienced the true pain of giving birth to raise a child. So I'll be the one to raise this child. No, that won't do. With the pain from my C-section still lingering, I haven't recovered enough to deal with this out-of-control mother-in-law. Take it easy, you weakling. Then where are you going? Give the baby back. With no strength in my belly, I couldn't run to chase after her. I won't forgive you. Give back the baby I risked my life to deliver. My name is Margaret, a pregnant woman who just entered her second trimester. It should have been a joyous occasion, but when I found out I was pregnant, I felt anxiety before joy. My husband Michael seemed to feel the same way. Why is that, you might ask? Well, I'm 44 years old and I had long given up on having children. Childbirth is worrisome, and considering my age, I worry about our future life. My mother-in-law who lived with us said, Michael, you're still young and energetic, but Margaret, are you okay with giving birth? Isn't it risky? I hate to say it, but is there a guarantee that the child will be born healthy? Mom, stop it. Besides, I'm almost 40, so I'm not young anymore. Margaret is having a boy, and she's still young. But you know women have an expiration date. I couldn't even muster the will to respond to her nonsensical comparison of my gender to an expiration date for food. Mom, no matter how close we are as a family, there are things you can say and can't say. Hmm, Michael, I wonder what's good about Margaret. I have a mother-in-law who has a son who is already 40 years old and is still mean to me every time I say no. Although I'm not young, I'm, I'm thick-skinned enough to let it slide each time. I don't have time to be hurt by every little thing. My husband supports me, but for his mother, he's her only son, and no matter how old he gets, he'll always be her precious little boy. I'm sure she's looking forward to the birth of her first grandchild. It's natural for her to worry about my advanced maternal age. First, I need to focus on managing my health and improving my physical strength for the job ahead. Three months passed, and my belly grew so large that anyone could tell I was pregnant. I needed to use the bathroom frequently, and lying on my back became uncomfortable. My legs felt heavy, and I got tired easily. Pregnancy isn't all joy. My mother-in-law's mean-spiritedness remained the same. Margaret, clean the toilet. Did you clean it this morning, or did you make your husband do it? Even though she should have known that it's my husband's responsibility to clean the toilet, she suddenly started saying such things. A pregnant woman must work hard to clean the toilet. You need to clean it because a precious child will be born. Well then, starting today, cleaning the toilet is your responsibility. While I didn't believe in baseless superstitions, if my mother-in-law says so, I had to accept it. You should also eat abalone to ensure that your baby's eyesights will be good. Abalone? No way. What if I get food poisoning? I've heard that abalone is, is safe. I can tolerate her complaining about me, but it's exhausting to deal with her nonsense. Have you brought all the baby supplies? Yes, I'm gradually getting everything ready. Which ones? Let me see. I'll check them myself. Huh? Check? Some things should be scrutinized, you know. Of course, but please don't make a mess. I had a bad feeling, and it turned out to be true. Margaret, you need to wash the baby clothes at least once. I was planning to wash them on a sunny day. You don't have enough diapers. You need more. Well, it'll be a waste if they don't fit later. Oh, I wish I had gone shopping with you. Next time, invite me. Oh, she complains about everything. But considering that she's thinking about her grandchild... I suppose I can endure it, although she's annoying. Margaret, are you planning to feed the baby with baby formula? Breast milk alone might be tough to handle when you need to feed the baby. Besides, at your age, your milk might dry up in no time. How dare you? That's uncalled for. I'll have you know it's me who will be giving birth, not you. This is your grandchild. 
you shouldn't be talking to me like that. She probably didn't expect me, who always lets things slide, to talk back. Although my mother-in-law was momentarily taken aback, she quickly switched to battle mode. What did you say? When did I ask you to give birth? I never did, and I certainly don't approve of you giving birth to my grandchild. Come to think of it, my mother-in-law didn't approve of my marriage to her son either, did she? She didn't allow it, I heard. I don't understand why her permission is necessary. Apologize for those words you just said. What? Saying things like my breast milk will dry up or not knowing if the baby will be born safely. That was terrible, wasn't it? Why do I have to apologize? It's the truth, isn't it? The baby inside my belly can hear you. That's impossible. Even if the grandchild hates me, I don't care. You should be the one to apologize for talking like that. Why did it have to come to that? Shut up. I won't forgive you until you apologize. In the end, I decided to practically ignore my mother-in-law. It's not good for my health. It would be reassuring if my mother-in-law stayed holed up somewhere. That night, I talked to my husband, or rather, vented to him. He sighed as if exasperated, and said, Forget about mom. Let it go. That's what I'll do. Let's try not to accumulate stress. I'm sure both of you are eager to see the baby. That's why you're clashing. Mom will calm down once she sees the baby's face. You just focus on giving birth. Thanks to my understanding husband, I decided to live without worrying about my mother-in-law. And finally, the day came. Contractions started on the due date, but after enduring more than 10 hours of pain, labor didn't progress smoothly. There are risks associated with advanced maternal age after all. Both the baby and I reached our physical limits, so we had to have an emergency C-section. My husband and I shared joy at the baby's loud cry when he was born. After a week passed, everything was going smoothly, so today is the discharge day. My husband came to pick me up in the car, but unfortunately he still has some work left, so he said he would return to the office. I'm really sorry, but if I finish the remaining work, I can get two weeks of childcare leave, so... Alright, I'll be waiting at home, okay? When I got out of the car, my mother-in-law was waiting at the entrance with a creepy smile. Welcome back, Margaret. I don't know about my husband, but I haven't contacted her at all since then, so I wonder if she's in a better mood now? Congratulations! She peeked into the baby blanket. Let's see. Oh, he looks just like Michael. How adorable. She said this with joy before quickly returning to a serious expression. I know, Margaret. It's disgraceful for a mother to give birth easily. I'll be the one to raise my grandchild. I don't know what she's talking about all of a sudden. I didn't have an easy time at all. What are you talking about? I could only retort with little force, and it made my stomach ache. You have to endure the pain and suffering to give birth and love. A mother who doesn't know what it's like to be in pain can't raise a child, so I'll raise him. Huh? No. I haven't recovered enough to deal with this crazy old lady. Well, I'm going to sit down for now, because I'm in pain. Really now? My mother-in-law took the baby away from me. Yes, yes, it's me, Grandma. As she says that, she walks out the front door. Where are you going? It's almost time for feeding. I can't hear what you're saying. Speak louder. But if I shout, it'll hurt my wound. No, I know I can't avoid it, but it's that painful. I glare at my mother-in-law. What's with that look? Rest well, Margaret. You're such a coward. My mother-in-law walks out holding the baby. If you take a newborn baby around like that and they catch an infection, what will you do? But I can't run after her because my stomach doesn't have any strength. Please, give me back my baby. My tears well up with frustration. I've just been discharged from the hospital and now I'm left alone at home. With a body that doesn't move as I want due to the pain, what kind of grandma is she? It's not time for crying. Anger wells up inside me. I said that it's your grandchild, but... I'm the one who risked my life to give birth. I pick up my smartphone and call my mother-in-law. If you can't be chased, then you should come back. I won't forgive you. After I made the call, my mother-in-law returned home, out of breath. I felt relieved to see my baby sleeping peacefully. 
What's going on? What do you mean? I was out visiting the neighbors, but I hurried back because you said that your wound opened and your organs were spilling out. I won't forgive you. Don't just take the newborn baby around here and there. Here and there? It's just the neighborhood. What you're doing is kidnapping. Even if it's your grandchild, doing it without my permission as the mother is kidnapping. What's that? Don't change the subject to being a mother. You had an easy time with a C-section, so you're not qualified to be a mother. You understand? I absolutely won't accept it, won't approve it, or forgive it. Who do you think you are? At that moment, my husband came home. I'm home, ladies. I was told to go home early. What's wrong, both of you? My husband is surprised to see us arguing at the entrance. My mother-in-law pretended to cry. Michael, it's terrible. Margaret won't let me hold my grandchild, and she says just touching it is kidnapping. I was stunned by her statement. How dare she twist the story like this? She's a disgrace as a mother for having a C-section. Right, Michael? Don't you think so? My mother-in-law saw agreement from my husband, but he gave a sympathetic look and seemed surprised. Michael, what's wrong? What are you talking about, Mom? Huh? It was explained to me beforehand that they might have to perform a C-section. I didn't hear anything about that. You were sulking in your room, right? It's natural that we couldn't talk. Was that so? Right. But Michael, you must be disappointed that she had a C-section. Wouldn't it be better to give birth normally? I was the one who signed the emergency C-section consent form. Huh? And what do you mean by normally anyway? Could you at least say natural? Huh? Margaret endured pain until the very end while doing squats and going up and down the stairs to help the baby come down. She absolutely didn't want a C-section, you know? Really? My husband's words aren't a lie. We could anticipate that my old-fashioned mother-in-law would speak ill of a C-section. I didn't want the anesthesia injection and the prolonged hospital stay. It's all for my convenience, actually. But let's keep quiet. Squats during labor were tough. Of course, it was painful, but I thought my knees supporting my heavy belly were going to explode. You see, it would be your first and last grandchild, so as you instructed, she was trying her best to give birth naturally. My husband seemed to interpret it that way, but I was just being stubborn because I didn't want to be bothered with all the fuss. But wait, are you really saying that a C-section is easy? You're joking, right? Should I cut your stomach open? Huh? Do you really understand? I endured the pain and finally had my stomach cut open. What's easy about that? My mother-in-law, pale-faced, must have been horrified by the thought. That's why I took two leaves of paternity leave. Paternity leave? Michael, what's the point of taking paternity leave? To support Margaret, right? Her wound hasn't healed yet, you know. What kind of person are you, Mom? So stubborn and old-fashioned. No, stop it, Michael. It's all, it's all because of Margaret. At that moment, the doorbell rang. There were no scheduled visitors. Who could it be? It must be my boss who helped me out. He said he's bringing some unused diapers because they have a lot at home. When I opened the door, my husband's boss was standing there. Congratulations, Miss Bridges. I'm sorry for the inconvenience at this difficult time. I'll leave right away, so don't worry about it. He brought several bags of diapers from his car. I heard about it from Michael. Well, my wife also had a C-section, so it must be really tough. I didn't miss my mother-in-law's sparkling eyes. She must have thought her ally had arrived. But that couldn't be further from the truth. Only my mother-in-law holds such prejudices these days. Taking care of a baby after it's born is tough enough. But you also have to heal your own wound and take care of the house, so I really respect you. If Michael's two weeks of paternity leave aren't enough, I'll extend it, so please contact me directly. The boss laughed heartily while my mother-in-law stared at him with a blank expression. If a father can't do anything, he'll end up being neglected by his precious wife. But you have your mother-in-law, so I suppose you don't have to worry. Me? She suddenly panicked and spoke. I am nothing but an extra. I see, so you'll accept the responsibility of watching over without doing anything unnecessary. 
You seem to be a wonderful young grandmother, and this baby is lucky. What? I know how quickly they grow up. I am an experienced parent who raised Michael well, so you should listen to me like an adult. Perhaps startled by her loud voice, the baby woke up and started crying. It's feeding time, and I want to give my baby a nappy. Cheryl, let's talk later. When I tried to go with my baby in my arms, she said, No, I don't acknowledge you as a mother, so give the baby back to me. My mother-in-law tries to take the baby by force. It's hard to keep standing because of the scar on my stomach. Are you okay? If my husband had not supported me, I would have fallen. At that moment, the baby suddenly started crying. Oh no, what's wrong? The baby never stops crying, even though my mother-in-law tries to calm it down. Cheryl, give it back. My baby isn't a toy, so give it back, please. Then my husband muttered, The baby probably doesn't even acknowledge you as a grandmother. What? It's okay, Mom. You don't need to acknowledge her as a mother. We're leaving. Huh? I was surprised by my husband's sudden statement. I have a long break, so it's perfect for moving. It might be a burden on you, though. Um, yeah, it's fine. My mother-in-law's face was red as a tomato. What? What do you mean, Michael? You're leaving me alone? She clung to her son with a desperate look. But my husband's face showed no signs of giving in. Mom, I'm relieved that Margaret's not hurt. My husband's attitude was so frightening that both my mother-in-law and I had no choice but to be silent. A person who doesn't usually get angry shows remarkable intensity in times of need. Seeing him like this utterly overwhelmed my dejected mother-in-law and her shoulders slumped, her mouth half open, clearly struggling for breath. Afterwards, we moved to an apartment in the neighboring town. Of course, we haven't given our address to my mother-in-law. Her messages have been coming in saying things like, What do you think of yourself? Or, I'll forgive you now. But I'm ignoring them. Yesterday, a message arrived saying that it's the daughter-in-law's duty to come and show the grandchild's face. But why can't she just ask nicely? I have no intention of meeting my mother-in-law unless she changes her attitude. After we left the house, various rumors about my mother-in-law spread, making it difficult for her to go outside. Even if she complains, I can only think that she brought it upon herself. Despite the scar from the C-section, there are no problems in my daily life. My husband, looking at my stomach, said thoughtfully, I heard once you have a C-section. You'll have one for the next birth, too. But I wonder if that's true. Huh? No way. Another one already? No, no, I'm talking about the possibility. What are you saying to an older woman like me? He may be joking, but I'm kind of glad. I found out after the baby was born that my husband loves children so much that he gets butterflies. So, I just have to keep my strength up in case anything happens. It doesn't matter at all how this future baby will be born. It's how he's going to live. He will grow up so fast, and we will take good care of him.